and welcome back to Backspace Academy. In this lecture on Virtual Private Cloud or VPC, we're going to build on what we already know about VPC. So we've launched an EC2 instance inside of a VPC. We've done that before. So now we'll look at the different options that are available for us for connecting into that VPC. We'll then look at how we can make sure that if we're running a web server on EC2, how to make sure that that is actually accessible over the wider internet. And finally, we'll finish up by talking about the security features of Virtual Private Cloud. Here we have a diagram of the AWS Cloud. And as we know, the AWS Cloud is divided up into multiple regions across the globe. And we also know that each one of these regions is divided up into availability zones. And those availability zones are physically isolated from each other. And what that enables us to do is that we can distribute our, our architecture across multiple availability zones. And by doing that, we are going to achieve high availability because if one availability zone goes down, the other availability zone will continue to operate and our infrastructure located in that availability zone will continue to operate as well. We also know that the number of availability zones in regions varies. US East has a lot of them, whereas Mumbai has only a few. We should also know that we can create a virtual private cloud within a region. And that virtual private cloud is our own private space within the AWS cloud. Now, when we previously launched an EC2 server or web server, and we had the WordPress application on that, that was launched within the default VPC. We didn't create that VPC. And so every time an account is created, a default VPC in each region is also created for us. We don't have to worry about that. But we can also create additional virtual private cloud. So we can have additional private spaces within the AWS cloud if we, if we desire. And it is also something that you should be doing because it does provide some very good advantages from a security perspective. We should also know by now that a VPC, it contains a subnet. And we need to have at least one subnet to launch an EC2 instance. But we can have multiple subnets and we can have those in multiple availability zones. And by doing that, we can launch EC2 instances into multiple subnets across multiple availability zones. And that means that if one of those subnets goes down or availability zones goes down, the other availability zone and its subnet that contains those EC2 instances will continue to operate. And again, when we did our WordPress application, we launched that into a subnet, and that subnet was a default public subnet that had been created for us by AWS previously. But again, we can create additional subnets or additional VPCs and subnets if we so desire. If we are launching a web server, for example, if we're launching a WordPress application, and we want that to be accessible to the wider public on the internet, we need to have an internet gateway at our VPC that allows that to happen. And that will be a scalable, it's redundant, and it's a highly available VPC component. So you don't need to worry about having multiple internet gateways. You just need to create an internet gateway and you need to create a, a route from that through to a subnet. And we'll talk more about that in the next slide. If you're looking for a secure connection to your enterprise, you can set up a virtual private network. And that will consist of a virtual private gateway on the AWS side. And it will consist of a customer gateway on the customer side. And that will create a VPN connection and it's a dual tunnel connection. So it has redundancy built in there. And so the VP, VPG is the VPN concentrator on the Amazon side of the VPN connection. And the customer gateway is a physical device or software application on the customer side of that connection. So that's not the only two options that we have for connecting to a VPC. We also have AWS Direct Connect. And that is a physical 
fibre optic high speed connection from an enterprise to AWS. And it's normally used by large organisations that require very uh, large throughput through to AWS. So there are a number of key requirements that we need for internet connectivity. So again, for example, we've got our WordPress application that we're running on an EC2 instance. And we want to make sure that people on the internet, the wider internet, not a private internet, can access that EC2 web server. The first thing that we need to make sure of is that that EC2 instance has a public IP address. So if it doesn't have a public IP address, it will not be found on the wider internet. So it needs to have that to be found. The VPC must have an internet gateway, otherwise there is no way for the wider internet to connect to that VPC. And finally, we need a route that is defined in a route table, and that will define the route from the subnet that our EC2 instance is inside to that internet gateway. So we're not going to talk a lot about route tables, but you just need to understand that for that traffic to route through your VPC, it needs to be defined. Otherwise, it, it, it will just not happen. So we have a number of features available within VPC to create high security. So we have security groups and they are firewalls and they operate at the instance level. So we define a security group for an individual instance. And that is stateful. So if traffic, and what, what we mean by stateful and stateless, stateful is when traffic that comes in to an instance with a security group, that return traffic from that request is allowed. If it's, if it's not, then that's called stateless. But stateful, it allows return traffic from a request that was allowed in uh, through your infrastructure. We also have network access control lists, and they can act as a second layer of defense. So if you don't touch them, then they will allow traffic in, but you can also uh, set them up as a second layer of defense, and they operate at the subnet level. So the network ac access control lists will operate across all instances that are located within a subnet. And those are stateless. So just because a request is allowed in, doesn't mean that the return from that request is allowed back out again. So they are stateless. So you need to have uh, both input and output control this set up. And finally, we've got flow logs and they will capture information of requests going in and out of your, your, your VPC. And that will be forwarded through to CloudWatch logs, which you can use for alerting. You can use it for analysis as well. So let's have a look at that. So we've got how our instances here in subnet number one, and they are referencing or associated to a security group. But if we look at subnet number two, we can see that, the, that we have multiple security groups. So those security groups, they operate on the instance. So if you've got multiple, secu uh, multiple instances, you can have multiple security groups. And so what that will do, that security group will allow requests that come in or deny requests that are coming. But if the request is allowed in, then the return will also be allowed out. And so that's what we mean by it is state full. And it operates at the instance level. Then we've got network access control lists. So if they're left alone, they'll just allow traffic coming in and out. But you can set up deny and allow rules that will control that even further and it provides a second layer of defense for you. But with network access control lists, just because something is allowed in through an allow rule doesn't necessarily mean that it is allowed back out again. So it is stateless. So if something is allowed in, we need to have another rule that allows it to come back out again. So all of this traffic needs to find its way from the internet gateway through to the subnet. And that is where the router comes in. And so we need to tell the router by putting an entry in our route table that defines the route from our internet gateway 
through to our subnet. And that's what we talk about when we say uh, a route table entry. And without that, we cannot have internet connectivity. So that brings us to the end of this lecture on VPC. It's a very high level one. You don't need to go into a lot of detail being a, either a cloud practitioner or a developer. You just need to know the high level stuff around a VPC and what you need for con connecting to a VPC. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.